Hello everyone, welcome back to our series on unit testing. Today we are going to dive deeper into some advantage feature of in unit. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the AAA pattern. This is a common pattern for writing unit tests for a method under test. We already talked about this pattern in previous episodes, but let's quickly review it. Arrange is for initial objects and set the value for the data that is passed to the method under test. Act invoke the method under test with the arrange parameters. Assert verify that the action of the method under test behaves as expected. So let's see this pattern in a practical example. In our example, uh, so we added some unit tests. For example, here is the arrange part. We initialize the objects and we create all of the inputs and it's ready to for the next part. And in the act part, we invoke the current method, which uh, we are going to test. And in the answer part, we examine the result and verify uh, to work as expected. So in our previous example, uh, so we have some unit tests. So if we want to use setup, for example, here, we initialized uh, email validator in each class. We can move this part uh, to the setup. Uh, let's do it together. So first, uh, I add setup attribute here. Up and uh, yeah, we need it like that. Public void, and if you press tap twice, you can have it without any fault. So, uh, this is how initializing email validator in each. Uh, unit test you can simply uh, initialize it in the setup part and for example you can also create uh, an instance of it like uh, email validator email validator and validator and yet here you can just use this dot validator equal validator and then you can use this variable everywhere in the style you don't need it here and just add this dot and same here and yeah we can remove it in all of our unit test let me quickly do it so and yeah 
as you see, I remove all of the individual initializer and I initialize it within my setup and address uh, them in my unit test. So now if I execute my unit test again, so all of my unit tests should run and turn to green. As you see, all of my unit tests run and all of them turn to green. That was how we can use setup. So the teardown also same as setup, but setup uh, runs before everything in our uh, test class and teardown is the last point that runs and we can uh, in our teardown part remove and like clean some resources so same as setup we add a attribute here teardown and the rest is same so for example in this part we can remove some resources like clean some sources and that's all about setup and teardown attribute in any unit and unit testing the next topic is parameterized unit test Unit test allows us to create parameterized tests. This is a powerful feature where we can run the same test method with different input. We use the test case attribute to specify different sets of data for the test method. Let's check it in an example and in practical way. So let's see how we can use parameterized unit test in a real project. In our current project, so for example, this unit test, we can simply eliminate this attribute and add another attribute like test case, test case with two parentheses. So we can simply remove. So in this unit test, we have a value for email. We set the value for the email and it's just uh, only one value. And we uh, verify the test result for is valid email based on this value. But we can use these uh, parameters and verify it and test it for different value so simply we can move this value to our test case parameter and eliminate it here and then declare our email variable here so here we can also define uh, many values for our email for example user one user two and so on so in this way we can test this method with different value so let's run our unit test again and it should turn to green yeah that's correct that was how we can use parameterized unit test so the next feature is grouping and ignoring unit tests a unit provide a way to group and ignore tests we can group tests using category attribute and if we want to ignore test we can simply use ignore attribute so let's check them in a practical way 
So uh, in our current example, for example, we can add some grouping to this current unit test. We can simply add category here and can define it uh, as a basic category. So here uh, I put this unit test in a basic category. We can also use the same rule uh, for all of them. For example, here uh, I put this one in a, for example, advanced category. And if I go to the uh, test explorer, let me first build all of them. And then go here and run it. So as you can see here, you can see the grouping. And if you have lots of unit tests, you can filter based on this group. And lastly, let's talk about code coverage. It's a measurement of how many lines of your code are executed while the automated tests are running. Tools like Dot Cover or Visual Studio built-in code coverage tool can be used to analyze code coverage. Let's go to our test project and see it in a real project. So in our current project, if you go to the text explorer and in this part, there is an option for analyze code coverage for all unit tests. If you click on this test, it takes some minute and it gives you an statics for your coverage of your unit test. It consists of covered block, not covered block, and so on. And here there are lots of details that you can use it and measure how many lines of your code are covered by your unit test. So that wraps up our exploration of the new need framework. You have covered crucial concepts that will empower you to write robust and effective unit tests. If you are finding value in our tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You have more exciting content coming your way. Happy coding!